Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use slow motion in DaVinci Resolve. If you're new around here, my name is Garrett Harding and I make videos right here on YouTube that teach you how to use DaVinci Resolve. So if you're into DaVinci Resolve or you want to get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the learning that's coming your way. Without any further ado, let's learn how to use slow motion. Okay, so that clip that you just watched is the clip that we're going to be working with today. I'm going to show you how to slow it down and how to make it go smoothly from one speed to the other like it did in the example. So once you have your high frame rate clip in your timeline, like this one is here, I shot this in 240, you're going to want to click on it so that it's outlined in red or selected. Go ahead and hit Control R and then you're going to come up with these retime controls. Otherwise, you can right click it and then click on retime controls right there. Just like that, does the same thing. Control R is your hotkey. So we're gonna find a spot in here that we think looks like a good spot to slow down. Once we get to the point where we want to slow the clip down, you're gonna go ahead and click on this little arrow down here next to 100%, and we're going to add a speed point. And then we'll say, okay, it'll be slow until just a few rotations. And then we're going to add a new speed point. And what this does, if we zoom in here, you'll be able to see it, is it creates three separate speed zones, essentially. So you have this one where it's 100, this one where it's 100, and this one where it's still 100. But in this middle one, we want to slow it down. And since I shot this in 240 frames per second, if we wanted it to be 24 frames per second, which is what our timeline is, we're going to need to bring this down to 10% speed. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see that that gets way longer right there. But we're going to go ahead and watch this from right there. Slows way down, but it's instant. It's fast, slow, fast, slow. And then you watch through, slow to fast, just like that. Like, no ramp up time. What you do for this is go ahead and right click your clip again. There's not a default hotkey for this one, but if you want to set one up, I mean, that's up to you. We're gonna go ahead and click on retime curve, and then we're gonna see our keyframes here. But you're in retime frame by default, you wanna be in retime speed. So go ahead and uncheck frame, and then we're gonna click on our speed thing here. This is a representation of our speed. This is 100%, this is our 10%. If we wanted to speed something up, it would be up here. If we go ahead and click on one of these speed points, which just represents a spot where our speed is changing. We can go from straight line here to curved line, which is going to be preferential in most cases. So we're gonna change that to our curved line and we can make this a longer curve or a shorter curve. It's all, it's all up to you, control how you need it controlled. But now let's make this bigger now that we've played with our retime controls. And let's, ooh. It's just more smooth. So we went from having hard lines like this, where it's just instant, bap, to taking those lines and rounding them off to give us more of a speed ramp. So we've keyframed our speed ramp, but what if we wanna change how fast it is now? You can just grab on this little triangular piece here on top and drag that in and you'll see that it speeds it up. It's not changing how much of the clip you're using, but it is changing the speed of the clip that is within that space. So if we want it to be way slower, we could bring it out to 5%, but it's gonna be choppy in the 5% area because you're stretching it out past what your timeline is meant to handle. So if you've got a 24 frame timeline, you're definitely going to start to see some skips if you go past that. So right here we're at 12. So it'll go slow down and you'll see that it doesn't look quite as smooth because we've gone below that 24 frame limit. Or not limit, but you know. And then if we bring it in, 67, it should still look normal because it has enough frames to populate the space that it's in. Basically the same. <laughs> Not too much of a difference there. Let's go to 16. You see that it's still smooth at 16. So anywhere you want to go, as long as you don't dip below your timeline's frame rate, if you need to check that, come up here to File, 
go to project settings and then you'll see it right here your timeline frame rate right here we've got 24 and our playback frame rate is the same so our 240 looks like 24 when it's slowed to 10 percent say we wanted to make another area another speed zone go ahead pop in add a speed point add another speed point we're going to make this one fast so we click between these two speed points we're going to change the speed to 800 percent and since we haven't told it that it's a speed ramp it's going to be harsh it's going to be a direct change it up way fast way slow you'll see it when you do it this is lagging because my cpu is like whoa but you'll see it in your work as you go it just makes it way faster but if you go too fast like this you lose a bunch of those frames and it just goes skip 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 skip, skip. if you want to make something look like a time lapse that's kind of a fun way to do that it's not like a true time lapse, but it can give the same effect. And then again, if you want to change the way that this ramps, you just grab that and you get these little controls that you can use to change that ramp. So slow motion really is that easy in DaVinci Resolve. If you have any questions about it, or if I didn't explain something in a way that you understand, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to help you understand this because slow motion can be a very, very useful tool when you're making films and editing for other people potentially. The ability to use slow motion is just a little bit of a level up on your whole entire editing game. You should know how to do it. And after this video, I hope you do. So again, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.